Hello everyone, I'm a broken robot. The genetics arm race is a biological term given to all ecological history prior to man gaining self-awareness. While we as modern humans know that our innate intellect and ability to think abstractly will always give mankind an edge over the animal kingdom, for the majority of humanity's existence this was not always the case. Since the first single-celled organisms, to the dinosaurs, to the first mammals, the natural world was always locked in perpetual evolutionary warfare with every biological life form competing to be on top. When it came to the carnivorous predators and the prey that they stalked, things like sharp claws, a thick hide, or poisonous skin played a key role in the survival of a species throughout the evolutionary period, with some species such as the North American porcupine, the poison dart frog, and trapdoor spider all being relics from this biological arms race. When the first caveman realized that if they picked up a rock and threw it at an antelope, it would be a whole lot easier than having to chase one down the old-fashioned way, it was all over for the animal kingdom in terms of technological advancements. From the simple spear, to bow and arrow, to the modern hunting rifles, it's obvious that man now dominates the natural world thanks to our technology. This, however, has led to a false sense of security. Many Disney movies and nature documentaries have made modern man, at least here in America, grossly overestimate their power over nature. Many modern humans, at least here in America, assume that we live outside of nature and that the animal kingdom has no power over us, but as many hikers, scuba divers, and survivors of animal attacks will tell you, when the technology and spoils of the modern world aren't at your fingertips, man is grossly underprepared to deal with what I call human predators. The few animals that still exist firmly above us in the food chain for a multitude of reasons. Before I hop into the meat and potatoes of this video, I want to make one thing clear, just in case if the message of this entire opening monologue has been lost to you. I'm not an animal expert, nor do I claim to be one. 99% of my research for this video was done entirely on Wikipedia and National Geographic, so if I get something wrong or some of my information is only partially true, feel free to correct me down in the comments below. When I make these types of video essays, if I get some information wrong, I want you guys to correct me so that way I don't accidentally spread misinformation on the internet. One more thing, I'm well aware that mankind isn't directly under threat by these animals, and as you'll come to find, in many cases, these animals' abilities to sometimes stand up to humanity has led to overhunting or loss of environment, but when the biological push comes to a shove, I highly doubt that the average Joes and Jans would actually be able to escape a rampaging silverback gorilla or outrun a hungry timber wolf. So I don't want anyone here in the comments bragging about how they could wrestle a bear or single-handedly fight off a swarm of angry Tasmanian devils. Yes, most of the animals on this list don't have humans in their diet, but I also think that it's important to understand that that doesn't mean that they're any less dangerous to people if you should come across them in the wild. When it comes to bears, the average human won't stand much of a chance. As the saying goes, black fight back, meaning when you encounter a black bear you want to try and look big and scare the bear off with noise, brown lie down, meaning that when you encounter a brown bear your best choice of action is to play dead, and white good night, meaning that in the rare occasion that someone might encounter a polar bear, their chances of survival are slim to none. While according to the World Wildlife Fund there are less than about 20 polar bear attacks a year, many wildlife records from the former Soviet Union painted polar bear attacks as a common occurrence when humans attempted to set up permanent settlements in what's considered to be the polar bear's natural habitat. Polar bears are apex predators in the Arctic, meaning that they are on top of the food chain and even with our technology and modern firearms, most people would be crazy to assume that they could survive an encounter with a polar bear. They are powerful carnivores with adaptations for hunting seals, their primary prey. Their size and strength make them formidable predators. While some researchers will note that polar bears don't see humans as prey, that depends on how isolated they are and what the local ecosystem is like. As global warming and further human development of the Arctic Circle continues, polar bears have had increasingly more encounters with man, leading to attacks and then the rare death from an attack by a polar bear. Polar bears are known to be grossly hostile towards humans and other polar bears when caring for cubs. It's also been observed that when polar bears are unable to meet their dietary needs, they'll eat humans or human remains, according to Russian military reports. These same military reports also show that polar bears have been observed to try and break into frontier outposts, whether in search for food meant for humans or the humans themselves. Polar bears are curious animals, and encounters with humans may be driven out of strictly curiosity. However, this curiosity can lead to close and potentially dangerous interactions especially if the bear feels cornered, or provoked, or is caring for cubs. Polar bears are not only fast on land, but agile in water, and are known to be patient and skilled hunters being able to track prey for miles off a single scent. While Coca-Cola ads may paint polar bears as 
chill dudes on an iceberg drinking a coke, in reality these gentle giants are nothing for mankind to mess with, firmly putting polar bears in the category of a human predator. While the polar bear might be dangerous if you were to accidentally get too close, the same can't be said about the hippopotamus. While cartoons and memes might have led many to believe that these large river piggies are gentle giants, don't be mistaken. Hippos are classified as the most dangerous land mammal in Africa, coming in with a yearly body count of 500 humans killed in hippo attacks. Hippos are known for their aggressive nature and are highly territorial. They can be particularly aggressive, in fact, when they feel that their territory is being threatened, especially during the breeding season or when protecting their young. While hippos have zero desire to eat humans, they're more than happy to stampede you in an attempt to drag you into the water so that way they can drown you. If you're on dry land away from the rivers and still encounter a hippo, don't assume that you're safe. Hippos are known to actually be more aggressive in the rare occasions that they have to venture far from their regular watering holes. While hippos are massive in size, they are also surprisingly fast, clocking in at a solid 19 miles per hour when running. What makes hippos so deadly on land is their fighting style. When male hippos battle over territory, they use their massive jaws and strong facial structures to try and maul each other to death. When applying the same tactic to a regular human, you could understand how hippos were more than able to rack up such a large body count in just a year. In many cases, encounters with hippos are so dangerous not because of the size of the teeth or the power of the hippo's neck muscles, but simply the weight of the hippos. With a whopping two-thirds of all hippo-related deaths involving our fragile bone structure being shattered under the weight of the 3,000 to 4,000 pound hippopotamus. Ugandan tourism websites warn tourists to avoid hippos and always remain at a distance. The deadliest factor of hippos is their unpredictable nature. Hippos can exhibit unpredictable behavior, making it challenging to anticipate their actions. They may attack boats, vehicles, or even humans without warning, especially if they feel threatened or concerned with their territory. It also should be noted that hippos are herd animals, meaning that it should be expected that if one member of a group of hippos becomes hostile towards someone or something, the rest of the group will shortly follow the example. In areas where hippos have become accustomed to human presence, such as near settlements or tourist areas, they may lose their natural fear of humans. This routine contact with humans increases the likelihood of dangerous encounters and has led to many African countries to ban wildlife tourism near significant hippo mating spots to prevent these deadly attacks in the first place. Between their territorial nature and lack of empathy for any life that isn't food or a fellow hippo, their strength and boldly high yearly body count firmly places hippos in the category of human predator. Staying inside the realm of Africa, we'll move from the temperate marshlands of East Central Africa and move north to the savanna. While this realm is full of numerous world-famous predators like lions, cheetahs, and venomous snakes, no predator is as deadly to humans and terrifying as the hyena. While annually hyenas kill around 400 humans a year, this number differs wildly with nations like South Sudan and Ethiopia reporting as many as 100 attacks a month on average. While hyenas tend to be scavengers stealing their prey from lions and other predators, hyenas have been observed to attack weaker isolated humans when in packs. Hyena clans can range from 5 to 80 members, with the larger a hyena clan the more dangerous they tend to be. While a lone hyena or even a few would never dare approach a human, even an elderly or younger human, in groups of seven or more, hyenas have been observed to attack and prey upon humans with animalistic brutality. Even though many who encounter a hyena attack survive, hyenas, like many animals, carry diseases that can be transmitted to humans. Contact with bodily fluids or bites can pose a major risk to humans, especially in parts of Africa that don't have access to modern medicine. A whopping fourth of all hyena-related deaths are linked directly to the transmission of diseases through bites. Hyenas will surround a human and one by one take turns trying to bite at a person's legs in an attempt to weaken and bleed out their prey so that the clan could then fight over the remains once the human has finally died. While some African societies will hunt hyenas to help protect local livestock, in other sections of the African continent the population has been left to overpopulate and outcompete the natural ecosystems in places like Ethiopia and Somalia, which has opened the door for young children and the elderly to be adopted as potential food sources for the hyenas. This can lead to bolder behavior and an increased risk of conflicts. While many wildlife experts say that it would be silly to conclude that hyenas see humans as prey due to their scavenger nature, 
and how in war-torn regions like northeast and western central Africa, hyenas have grown accustomed to feasting on the remains of fallen soldiers and fighters in the various conflicts taking place across central Africa. This has had the unintended consequence of hyenas that are unable to find food in areas that have been overpopulated or a loss of habitat has taken place has led to hyena attacks becoming a common occurrence in southern Somalia and South Sudan. While for now hyenas are still considered lowly scavengers, with each year the number of attacks and deaths via hyenas is only increasing, firmly putting them in the category of a human predator. While in modern years most residents of South America see jaguars as gentle protectors of the jungle that will avoid humans and rarely venture out of their natural territory, don't be mistaken. Historically, the people of Venezuela, Colombia, and Brazil have always culturally feared the jaguar as a fierce hunter of the rainforest. While records vary, depending on which source you look at, in the late 19th century, jaguar attacks were a common occurrence in areas that had been deforested. While jaguars are usually more likely to flee than attack when approached by a man, ecologists and wildlife experts in the region have observed that when jaguars can't meet their dietary needs, they're more than happy to adopt humans into their diet, with children being especially common prey for jaguars in western sections of Brazil. While today in 2023, jaguars kill only about 40 people a year, usually in the form of overbearing tourists that get too close, or lost rainforest hikers that are preyed upon after being fatigued from walking, jaguars, like most big cats, actually hate the taste of human flesh. They have been observed to actively prey upon humans for food in dire situations, but won't actively attack humans unless they feel threatened or are absolutely desperate for food. Like polar bears, jaguars are also apex predators and are known for their strength and powerful jaws that can easily make quick work of man. They have a robust build and are capable of taking down large prey including caimans, deer, and capybaras. In some cases, they may see humans as potential prey. Jaguars are extremely territorial creatures, and while they will never specifically hunt humans, it's been recognized that when jaguars feel threatened, they are more than happy to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with man. Most reported attacks occur when tourists accidentally stumble upon the den of a jaguar, or a jaguar with young is in the area. Jaguars are known for their stealth and ambush hunting tactics. While their primary prey consists of wild animals, they may opportunistically target domestic animals in areas where humans might already be and jaguar territories overlapping with human territories lead to increasing instances of jaguars' flight or flight techniques leading to the death of unaware humans that probably didn't even expect a jaguar to show up in their backyard in the first place. While jaguars might not be as vicious as hyenas or have as high of a body count as hippopotamuses, an encounter with jaguars is usually deadly, which is why I consider the jaguar to be a human predator. While the jaguar could easily body humans in most environments, their timid and isolationist nature makes encounters with them very rare. Additionally, since most jaguars rarely encounter humans, a natural sense of fear will help prevent attacks, with this phenomenon being observed and applied to many other predators, like lions, pythons, and timber wolves. These animals could easily be classified as human predators, despite their limited exposure to man. But due to their limited exposure to man, they are more likely to see humans not as animals but as objects. The same, however, can't be said about the next animal on our list. The saltwater crocodile, sometimes called the Siamese caiman, has spent the last thousand years in Southeast Asia and Southern Africa living in and around humans, whether it be in the lagoons of Burma, the rivers of Indonesia, or the bogs of Mali. While it varies depending on geographical regions, saltwater crocodiles have developed a sense of power over humans simply through proximity. While crocodiles don't see humans as prey, unlike jaguars, they no longer have any sense of naturalized fear of humans, making attacks from crocodiles a common occurrence in some parts of the world. In places like East Timor, in some of the more swampy regions, it's a common occurrence to see farmers missing limbs from crocodile attacks. And in sub-Saharan African nations, the government has to play PSAs on the TV and radio to remind mothers to not let children under 12 play alone near rivers, as crocodiles are known to target children in regions where attacks are more common. While the amount of attacks depend on the region, around a thousand people die in crocodile attacks every year, and while reports vary in estimation, an estimated 20,000 attacks by fresh and saltwater crocodiles take place every year. Crocodiles in general are known for being very aggressive, and they are particularly aggressive when they feel threatened or are concerned about the limits of their territory. 
They are ambush predators, often relying on surprise to catch their prey, which often makes attacks on humans very deadly due to this factor. If a crocodile perceives a human as a potential threat or prey, it may react aggressively without thought. Crocodiles are infamously known for taking limbs due to their infamous tendency to not let go of something once it's within their jaws. Crocodiles are territorial animals and they may defend their territory aggressively to the death. Encountering a crocodile in its territory, especially during the breeding season, when they can be more aggressive, increases the risk of an attack. In many Asian regions, crocodiles coexist with human populations due to the shared habitats such as rivers, lakes, and mangrove swamps. Human activities like fishing, farming, or bathing in crocodile-inhabited waters can inadvertently lead to confrontations and attacks. While crocodiles aren't always the apex predator of man that some sources will claim they are, thanks to their tendency to eat limbs and their high body count, crocodiles fall into the category of human predator. While there are numerous other animals that we could place on this list, it would be absolutely fruitless, since science has already identified the most deadly of all human predators. While a tiger or killer whale might be able to easily body the average man, they'll only attack humans in rare occasions or if they're desperate for a food source, with many of the animals I've actually mentioned in this video actually being endangered species directly due to human interaction. But the most deadly human predator has a body count of a whopping 700,000 deaths per year. This beast of nature actively stalks and preys upon humans in every region of the world except Iceland and Antarctica. They bring death, disease, and discomfort with just their very presence. That's right, my dear viewer, the most deadly human predator, without a doubt, is none other than the bloodthirsty, mighty mosquito. And with that being said, I hope you all enjoyed the video and our look at the less savory side of man's interaction with nature. If you've stuck around this long, I want you to head down to the comments and leave your favorite human predator down below. Remember, a human predator doesn't have to be an animal that hunts or even attacks people. Any animal that you personally think could beat a human in a 1v1 fight, whether it be a rooster or a silverback gorilla, I'm just curious to hear what your guys think on the topic and who your favorite human predators may be. But more than anything, I'm just so absolutely happy to have all of you here on the show today. If you like what you see, why not take a moment to leave a like? If you like this video, not only does it let me know that you guys want more content, but it personally helps me out in the YouTube algorithm, so hey, thanks a bunch. If you haven't already, why not subscribe? That way you won't miss my weekly video essays, reviews, and commentary on whatever topic of the week has piqued my interest. I make videos on everything from celebrity drama to analyzing artwork from the 1700s. So there's always something for everyone here at Broken Robot Entertainment. With that being said, I hope you all have a great day. Remember to always treat the wildlife with respect and be at a distance and stay cool.